Welcome back to the lab. Welcome back to EE for everyone. I've got to say it feels pretty great to be talking to you again. And I say that because as you've been aware, we've been moving and things have been changing and that's been good. But I just want to take a little break from our electronic load series to talk to you about something that I think is really exciting. Like I don't often get excited about technology, at least to the point where I see a dev kit on the internet and I say, I need to try this now. But that is exactly what happened and I wanna walk you through that. So basically, here's what we're talking about today. We're talking about this little dev kit called the M5 stack and this module that was so cool, I just had to get one. So I don't know if you've had some of the same passions as me, but I personally think that thermal cameras are pretty much the best. And there have been a couple interesting developments for those that have not been in this space. FLIR has been dominating the thermal camera market for about as long as I can remember. And there's starting to be some other folks making sensors. Uh, one of these is from Panasonic. That's the one I got my hands on here. It's an eight by eight grid IR camera, which is kind of halfway between an IR sensor and IR camera. It's really not a lot of pixels, but eight by eight is better than, you know, just taking a temperature somewhere, right? You can display that on a screen. And there was another one that was uh, from a different vendor that was like 32 by 64 pixels, which is also pretty great. Now there's this technology that FLIR has been using for a long time. And basically they marry an IR sensor with a camera and then they use the combination of those two images, the lower resolution infrared data with the visual data to kind of upscale the resolution of their thermal sensor. We're not gonna be diving into that today, but what I did wanna do is I saw there were some projects that used specifically the M5 stack and the sensor. And I just wanna walk through our process of using both of these for the first time. See at the bench, there's a couple things, um, basically in the box with our M5 stack, they gave us this adorable little set of jumpers, uh, just a few pins to get you going, and a USB type C cable. All right, if we go ahead and plug this into our computer, this is a really short cable. Okay, looks like um, hmm. well, look at that, Wi-Fi networks. Uh, it says there's hmm, buttons test, A, B, C. Looks like we made it, it looks like buttons are working. Are there more buttons that it's waiting for? I'm assuming it'll go if I hold it. I don't know, but that, that's pretty cool. Like a, a test application starts running. Uh, if I press, oh, looks like we started the process again. That's pretty cool. So it looks like they're just demoing the graphics library and this might actually be like a functional test for them at the end. Um, Apparently, buttons test is the end, something like that, um, but pretty cool. So beyond the M5 stack, what we need is a pretty simple breakout here. And looks like they heat sealed it in two different spots. Gave us a few pins, I think twice as many pins as we need. That's okay. And what we can see is the thermal sensor with the, uh, the pins here and, and oh, wait, what? You can't really see this too well. Well, just allow me to, uh, oh, how's that? Does that work a little better for you? Yes, we have the microscope. So yeah, we'll just take a quick look at what we've got here, got a really nice matte black solder mask that I do indeed appreciate. Um, yeah, that's the AMG 8833, that's the name of the sensor. Looks like a reasonably well laid out board. If I flip this over so you can get a look at the back, I squared C, yeah, IRA. 
pretty fantastic. They don't add super special, um, super special names like uh, the Arduino boards. Basically, they abstract things to a pretty high level, where even if they have multiple boards that have similar hardware, like for example, um, oh, what would even be like the Uno and the Leonardo that they had for a while that were basically the same hardware. Uh, they would they wouldn't call it by its um, name. They would call it by like a, an Uno or a Leonardo, even though behind the scenes it was basically the same. Looks like that's not what happened for the M5 stack and looks like instead what they have done is they have just called it what it is, which is an ESP32. So I'm not sure how that'll work for getting libraries around the display or I suppose the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, that's all built into an ESP32, so that's all the same. Then they've got these pin numbers kind of out on the side. There's a few little things we're gonna need to get figured out, um, but it shouldn't be too bad. Evidently, the M5 Stack Core and the M5 Stack Core 2 are different things. I now have the library for the M5 Stack, which is what this is. Okay, now we have everything that we need to get going. We got the M5, got the Core, got the... Okay, so now I should be able to go to an example. I think we're on COM8. Let's try to upload. Let's see what we see. Uh, and not sponsored, none of this is sponsored. Um, just to be totally 100% uh, transparent on why we bought the M5 core. <laughs> Basically, I saw one article online that integrated the thermal camera with the display. And I was like, hey, that doesn't look half bad. <laughs> why not? Let's give that a try. And it's basically like a, I feel like they already did the hard work for us. So let's, let's go ahead and leverage their hard work to, hey, whoa, Tetris. What, what do I do? How does this, okay. Okay, rotate left, right. I see. Is there a, <laughs> all right. Uh, hopefully you can see this because I am, I am just gonna... Okay, I said I was gonna play this until I lost, but I'm not gonna lie, getting a little bored. Let's do what we came here to do. <laughs> so it looks like, by default, they made this awesome uh, interpolation algorithm because why the heck not? Uh, so they are upscaling the eight by eight grid to make this thing look pretty fantastic. And I guess the only thing I can really say to that is, let's try to compile now that we've installed a library. And it looks like we are going to be off to the races. Oh, by the way, did I mention that the M5 stack has a built-in battery? Yes, yes, this has a built-in battery. So once we get this up and running, we can just carry this around the house and just look at things. We just have a thermal camera now. And there, there's a reason why this is so popular. As I am realizing the amount of development that has gone into this dev kit and this example, I am not at all all surprised this has been covered by everyone and their dog in the electronics slash maker slash whatever you want to call this community this is everywhere and the reason why is that thermal cameras are really really cool if you've never seen one before i i'm not going to tell you what to do I'm not your mother, but this was pretty cheap, and I've got a feeling it's gonna be sweet. All right, we're done compiling. Time to upload. Let's see what we came here for. Here we go. 
Okay, I don't know exactly how they scale. Wow, I'm like, I'm excited. Whoa. Yes! Oh, can you see that? My hand. You can see my hand. Oh, fist. Open hand. Fist. Open hand. I'm gonna put it at myself. There is one. One EE -E for everyone. Alright, let's get that on my face. What does it say? Let's get it closer to my face. 29C. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Can you see that? That's me! On the thermal camera. Okay, let's get that on the wall. What, uh, what does the wall say? 17. This was worth every penny. Every penny. Like, here. I'll do, I'll do one more thing before we... I, I'm standing in front of the sensor. Why? Oh, yes! So you can see there's my head. I've got some hands. You can see my hands. You can see my head. Okay? You can't see anything in the middle. Why? Well, I'm wearing a sweatshirt. Okay? I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to take off my sweatshirt. Ugh. Yes, and now you can see I've got a shirt. And I've got arms and hands. And if I lift up my shirt, you can see that it's warmer. <laughs> that is so cool. Thermal cameras are amazing. I've got to say, I think this is one of the first times that we've ever gone uh, mobile on... <laughs> E for everyone. Uh, man, I don't, I was not prepared for this. Um, I'm gonna go find, ooh, there's a laptop. Let's see, is it gonna look laptop-y from the side? No, it just looks vaguely warm. Incandescent light bulb. 50, 60, cool. Yeah, uh, LED light fixture. <laughs> way cooler. That's not too surprising. Kind of the same color, and I think part of the reason why is if you get a thermal camera, what they'll usually do is they will rescale the image based on the maximum in that grid on the left. They'll adjust it dynamically so you can actually like pick stuff out. So you can see that some things are like warmer or cooler, but nothing in particular stands out and I'm gonna start running some water that is hot water. And then, oh, there we go. Now you can actually see the hot water in the sink and you can see the flow of hot water out of the faucet. And now as the water leaves, now the sink is returning to room temperature. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. We turn the hot water back on. You can immediately see the, uh, that vertical line that is the hot water comes and goes. See the, yeah, you can see like a little hot spot where the heat is venting out the back of the computer. It's, uh, it's a little warmer. And I've got a little network appliance over here on the wall. Yep, sure enough couple power bricks hanging off of a power strip looks like those aren't working too hard hey it's not bad that's not bad oh we're starting to pick up something hmm what could that rectangle be perhaps a little bit of water getting hotter Thermal cameras are fun. Okay, let's, uh, yeah, you see the heat starting to spread. Probably crawling up the glass a little bit. Maximum of 32C. 
I love that uh, hot spot. So the accuracy on the sensor is rated for like two and a half degrees. It's not bad. Not great. You know what the maximum is rated for? But we're about to find out. Because this will take us all the way up to 100C. It's pretty cool to see how the heat is spreading, kind of crawling. I hope that eventually we'll see the entire pot. And maybe the steam coming out the top. I'll just keep backing up. So we can just watch it grow. I'm just resting this on the counter as it goes. What's interesting to me is that the reflectivity of the, gl the glass seems to be affecting our ability to detect. Though at this point, it seems to think the entire glass surface is hot, which is probably accurate. The reading is really not. If we put some tape or something on this, I think it would be much more accurate. We're getting around 66, but I'm seeing visible like, it is boiling. It is boiling. So, we know it's closer to uh, 100C. Though 70 is not throwing any errors at this point. Um, seeing something at 72. It's getting a little closer, see if that. Oh! Okay. So, let's find that range where we start throwing an error. 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 80. Hmm. Okay, well, that's not bad. Um, let's close out this video. This M5 stack is awesome. I have not been this excited about a development kit for a pretty long time, and all I've gotta say about it is that this is one of the most seamless integrations of hardware and software that, that I have seen outside of like the Arduino space. And really this is quite married to the Arduino space, right? It's an ESP32, no, I think that's right. I think it's one of the ESP modules. And uh, basically, you know, what I see is they've added tight integration between some commonly integrated peripherals, right? They basically took their micro, slapped it into a reasonable enclosure with a couple buttons on the front. You add some convenient IO on the sides, including uh, I squared C and so forth. And now all of a sudden, you've got a pretty nice little dev kit and yeah, I can't wait to see how we use this in the future. They're pretty cheap. Uh, I'll add some links down below to where I found these things on Amazon. Um, but you could probably find them in lots and lots and lots of places. Just had to share this with you. Most of all, I hope that you learned something great today, and I hope to see you again soon. I just want to say thank you for watching EE for everyone. Thank you for taking the time to be a part of this community, and I hope to see you again soon. If you've got thoughts, comments, questions, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. So definitely um, get engaged with EE for everyone. I love seeing the discussion in the comments. All right, that's all for now, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.